Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're going to be bagging up my Vintage Collins Crime Club and White Circle Vintage Paperback Collection. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Right then, so after the last couple of videos, I now have normal paperback bags, but I've also got these, which are the digest ones, which are much, much wider. So I suspect, but I don't know for sure until we try it, that these wider ones are going to uh, fit, well, the books that we were struggling with last time round. And just in case, even those aren't big enough, I still have a little uh, pile of uh, uh, comic bags here as well, just in case. So... We've got plenty to be playing with, and uh, I don't think we're going to have anything like the problems we had last time. So I shall get this uh, pile of paper bag bags out. Now we've got, I did a quick tally up, and I reckon I've got about 150 Collins Crime titles in my collection. So a fair old batch to get through. I have some digest bags ready as well. I have also, once again on the advice of a viewer... Got myself um, this uh, scotch tape dispenser. So rather than have lots of little bits of tape lining up, um, we're we're going to be good to go now. Straight off the bat then, this is uh, Collins Crime Club number one. Now what I will do, these have all theoretically been through my normal cleaning process, but they've also been sort of sat on the shelf uh, for a good year or so since I actually did that. So I'm just going to take a few at a time and just give them a very gentle, this is the only possible area where they could have picked up a little bit of um, dust. Although when I was taking them off, I did spot one or two, which had spines, which might need a bit of a re-glue. But let's have a look then. So this is, as I said, this is a Collins number one, released with an Agatha Christie. So a great, great choice here. And um, the initial batch just had the first six titles on the, uh, on the front. Now, when you come with these uh, Collins Crime Clubs, it's really difficult to identify a first edition. Um, you just It's something that you sort of pick up with these over time. But the actual first of this one is, this is the correct edition. Um, because those first eight editions that are listed there were actually for the hardback. And this is edition number nine, where it was released in, in paperback. And uh, the easiest way to tell is by the number of titles on the back. So the first six were announced all at the same time. And this was, uh, as I said, number number one. And it's in a wrapper as well. Now, I definitely don't want to force this in. But in actual fact, look at that. It goes in really, really snugly in actual fact. So I think, we well, we may be very lucky. It may be... We don't have to keep swapping bags and things like that today. Although looking ahead, it does look as if some of the uh, some of the ones we got to come up might possibly be a bit wider. And then, like as we get closer to the war, um, the, the books seem to get a lot thinner and smaller. So they'll definitely fit in ordinary paperback bags. But we've got the digest ones on standby, just in case. I think is uh, is a good place to be. But if, if we can fit them in normal paperback bags, and that's what we'll do. This one may be a little borderline. No, nope, it's all right. So you can see, unlike my Penguin collection, a lot of my Collins Crime Club collection uh, came predominantly from one source. It was one collector. And um, I bought his Crime Club collection. And um, he picked them up over the years. And I think he himself had bought a batch from a long-time collector of them. And they weren't in particularly good shape. And I've never really tried to upgrade them to get better copies. All I've really tried to do is get the ones I've I've not got, you know. Um, and I think that's uh, just, you know, just having one of each will be fine with me. Um, but they are quite fragile. They don't seem to be as robustly made as the penguins of the period were. And this one... It's a little bit tighter. There we are. I want to get them into the bags without catching the dust wrappers um, and doing more damage than good, you know. But I would be interested if on the back of watching these videos, you yourself have now started uh, bagging your vintage paperbacks, you know. 
um, because as well as it being uh, the book's looking absolutely fantastic, it's uh, it's quite a fun thing to do, you know. Very very frayed dust wrap along the top there, little bits of it coming off. <sighs> See, with my penguins of this period, I generally when they're in dust wrappers, I generally take the dust wrappers off in actual fact. Um, but with these, I, I haven't actually done that. I've kept them all together. I do actually have a box, like a, almost like a shoe box, and it's full of um, dust wrappers folded out flat. And I've got um, quite a batch of penguin and a few pan ones, in fact. Um, and I the old albatross as well, which is another vintage series I think will benefit greatly from being bagged up. Um, with regards bagging up stuff, I, I haven't really thought about bagging what I would call more modern books, sort of, you know, 50s and 60s stuff. I'm going to try and concentrate on the uh, the, the war and pre-war titles at the moment, because I think they're probably the most fragile of all and will benefit from uh, being bagged up. Oh, actually, I'll pop that. That was in a digest bag, so we definitely don't need that just yet. In fact, we may not need those at all, since these are sliding in uh, quite snugly, you know. But I do have a couple of hundred of each sort of bag on standby, basically. So uh, we're ready now for all incidences. <laughs> Any eventuality will be catered for. But there we are, so that's the first five. Now, like the penguin ones, we just flatten the air out, but not much air in there, but. Don't they look nice? Very, very uniform design there with the uh, the pistol and the, uh, the dagger there. That was the next few here. So we get these three out. There's a lot of Christie in the list. Obviously, Collins published a lot of her in hardback at this point. So uh, consequently, I'm guessing they had first dibs on paperback publishing. Penguin obviously did one, didn't they? Um, Mysterious Affair at Styles. But then that hastily got withdrawn and they re released um, <clears throat> Murder on the Links instead. And that was it for Penguin in publishing Christie in paperback until the 1950s or late 1940s rather. Uh, when uh, Penguin and Pan actually started publishing a few. So here's another great early early one. Why didn't they ask Evans? Why indeed? Now I've got it at a slight angle because I do need a bit of room to work. But I also don't want you missing any of the, uh, the bagging action as it were. So that the yeah, that I'm turning it slightly that way so you get a good look at it, but it really does uh, finish them off lovely, doesn't it? It really, really does. Yeah, you don't often find these, and I, I have to admit, I haven't really tried to fill out the ones that I'm missing, because when they turn up on places like eBay, they are so expensive. Now, this is really tight, and... The spine is a bit frayed, so I'm going to go for a wider bag. Um, they do tend to be quite expensive, more than I really want to pay. Um, so I did pick up a few last time I visited Zardos Books. Um, but what I'd really like to do is get the first hundred of these, if I could. I think they're the most sort of iconic and the best looking of the... Uh, of the Crime Club titles, you know. This is the first time using a digest bag. And that's okay, except it wasn't fully folded down, so it's not tight. Let's try that again. tape everywhere now. 
Right, let's try again. It wasn't quite to the bottom of the bag. So I need to be a bit tighter there. There we are. And that's going to do it. That's better. Yeah, that's better. End of an ancient mariner. So these were cleaned to the best of my ability about two years ago. And since then, they've been on a shelf. Uh, not all of them have been stood up. Some of them have actually been lying down in a pile, which I know is a bit of a sin, but to get all the collection in, unfortunately, that's what I have to do at the moment. <clears throat> but it's meant that lying flat they've not really picked up any dust at all but i'm just giving them that that final once over before i en encapsulate them as it were of classic authors who I'm sure you'll recognise. This sort of golden age crime period is uh, very much in vogue in some circles nowadays and a lot of these books sort of got forgotten and have started to be reprinted or they are being reprinted uh, by like the British Museum. There's, they've got their classic crime imprint which is very successful and uh, there are various shows. There's like the Who Done It podcast for example which concentrates on classic sort of golden age crime which is bringing some of these books back to a, a newer audience which is fantastic I mean, titles like this corpse in the constable's garden <laughs> just makes you want to dive in doesn't it and i've said it before but there's just something about holding a really vintage paperback from this era you know it's just there's something special about it that is just fantastic I, I really really love it it's a feeling that unless you're here having one you know got one in your hands and you're you know about to tuck in and start reading it you know it's like it's just an indescribable feeling these books here are all uh 80 plus years old now you know these are from the uh at 36, 37, 1936, 1937. I mean, just incredible, really, when you think about it. And they really do have a bit of history with them, which is uh, just lovely. But surprisingly, when you think of the age of them, and, you know, I said, you know, moaning about picking up ones that I'm missing, which, you know, they're selling for like £10 or, or more slightly on uh, eBay, depending on the author. When you think about how old they are, they're real, they are collectibles. I mean, they really, really are. They're beautiful early editions of sometimes absolutely classic works. And uh, you have to remember that with paperbacks, you know? Paperbacks from this sort of period, at least. Another great one, Murder of Roger Android, real big, thick book here. So we'll see if this one squeezes in. Going all right. Quite a tight fit that particular one, but it's gone in okay. It really is going to give these very very fragile books quite a quite a good bit of protection, isn't it? This John Road apparently is worth a try. It's certainly one that's on my radar. I 
I've got to say, when I've now that I've done the first hundred penguins, which you might have seen in my first couple of bagging videos, um, they do look so, so great on the shelf. Now this one here, as you can see, it has got a really tatty dust wrapper. Um, look at this. But underneath, it's absolutely fine. The dust wrapper has been protected, but you know, as I said, if this is my penguins, I'd probably just take it off and stick it in with the dust wrapper box that I've got. In fact, I think I am going to do that because it does look really, really fragile and it's not doing the book any favours, is it? So I'll know that I've got it. So I'll pop it to one side. But underneath, really, it's done its trick. It's kept the book nice and clean. A little period inscription there. D.W.B. Logan, September 24th, 1937. Amazing, eh? Once again, those would have been the hardback prints and then it would have gone into this form for the first time in paperback, you know? And of course, it's weird to think that back then the publishers didn't really want their books going into paperback because they just thought it was just making the... Um, it was cheapening the title. Um, and some books were selling, like the Christie's, would sell again and again and again, even in hardback. Obviously, libraries would get it, but if that was the only way to get a new Christie, the hardback would be a viable option. But, as I think Alan Lane figured out, if you sell, you know, 3,000 copies of a hardback book at a 15 shillings or something like that, or you sell 100,000 copies of a paperback at sixpence, you're going to make more out of the paperback and also increase the author's awareness. And that was how he sort of sold it to a lot of the authors. And um, when the other authors, including Collins, saw how successful Anne and Lane had been, they soon jumped on the bandwagon. Now, here's another one which has absolutely got a frayed dust jacket. So this is no good, is it? Look at it. <laughs> the pieces, the pieces of the jacket. But it's okay. Underneath, it's all right, isn't it? But yeah, it's amazing how many other publishers started to jump on the paperback bandwagon. And um, if they didn't do one themselves, they sort of allowed their books to be published in paperback by other publishers. So I suppose the other big series, and we'll get to these eventually, would be the Hutchinson Sixpennies. And they were very much all over it. And that was a little conglomerate of other publishers who didn't want to make their own paperback imprint but we're happy to let Hutchinson do it and uh, once again I've probably got about 100 150 Hutchinsons maybe a bit more in fact but then they did a few spin-off series as well two pins and other ones like that so uh, the good thing with these although I predominantly collect the crime ones I do collect anything that came out as a white circle and I've got representations of all their other sort of genres so their other big series which i've only got a couple of was in purple which we'll see in a while and they were mysteries rather than crime crime does seem to be green doesn't it the color the green color is for crime this is a rough one so see if it goes in a normal bag or not but yeah so i've got a western for example which is yellow and the mystery was purple yeah, that's going to struggle, so we'll pop that in a digest. And there was a John Goolsworthy, the novelist John Goolsworthy. He had his own series for the Forsyth saga, which, once again, difficult to imagine today just quite how popular that series of books was. But they were massive sellers, even in hardback. And I remember a friend of mine had, his parents had the... Uh, the Forsyth Saga books in hardback and they were convinced they were worth a lot of money and I had to break their bubble unfortunately and say well unfortunately they're not they were so common um, that copies are quite plentiful even in hardback for edition. unfortunately this one here <clears throat> it's got such a delicate spine that a bit of it's come off there I'd like to get it out
try that again. So I have brought the entire Collins collection with me today um, to bag up. And that includes the crime ones, some of the, well, all the end series ones that I've got in different series, like the Western one, for example, but also services editions, which I think are fascinating. And I've got some foreign releases. I've got um, some Indian ones, which are supremely rare, uh, only a handful. So uh, we'll get to see those as well. And the nice Canadian ones, which have got picture jackets. So hopefully quite a varied bagging episode today. Okay then, cracking on. And the John Rowe, this one's a nice condition copy. I'd like to get more of their services editions. Now Collins themselves, I think printed probably more services editions than any other publisher. You know, a few hundred in fact, and I've only got a handful. Um, they turn up um, in varying prices. If it's a, a collectible author like Christie, the services editions tend to sell for about £25 each. Um, sometimes a really obscure author might end up, I've seen one or two go for a couple of hundred. It's like, wow, they must be so, so scarce, you know? Um, but the thing was, the Collins services editions were actually sold uh, unsold copies rather which didn't get distributed to the services were sold in WH Smith's so they usually have a sticker on that says this is like surplus surplus stock you know but um, even so it would be well it would be very very uh, difficult I think to take on such a task of trying to collect them so I don't I just say if they come my way that's great lovely to have you know, a few examples of the services editions, but, you know, to, to think that you're ever going to try and get them all is probably quite a tall order, you know? There really is only one very good website on paperbacks from this era. It's just called, sort of like, well, I can't, I can't even remember the name of it, but unfortunately it's not been updated for about three years. I mean, it's still online. The content is phenomenal. A bit missing from the spine there. I mean, really, it's the most comprehensive site of its nature on online. But I've reached out several times on the addresses on there and um, I don't get a reply. Um, and the, as I said, the actual site itself hasn't been updated for approximately three years. So <clears throat> I'm hoping that the... Uh, curator is uh, still around and um, all is well you know but whether they're still collecting I don't know but it was very comprehensive and maybe they just ran out of things to say because <laughs> all these like pre-war predo is predominantly pre-war series on there they'd all been uh, covered in some form you know it's another nice one isn't it you see the books they're nice they're they're nice to hold in the hand they're a, they're a pleasant reading experience um they're not quite as nice as the penguins but they're very very close you know there are as i said other sixpence publishers pre-war around hutchinson being the big one but there was the albatrosses which are also they are also very very nice i have to say um to read but heavy <laughs> um but that's about it any other sixpence publisher pretty much like there's the Muthan six pennies in there they seem to have used very cheap paper in their production which is not great and um, there's only 20 of those of which i think I've, i'm just over halfway so i'll bring these odd little pre-war series all down on mass and we'll get them all done at the same time i almost ended up putting that in a digest bag there but i hope even in this dust wrapper, uh, it's just going to squeeze in. Does that lie flat? Yeah, look at that. Lovely, isn't it? They're almost like iconic, aren't they? These, they really are. Now I mentioned um, 
the rise in sort of golden age crime. And uh, there is a fantastic website and podcast called She Done It. And a few of my viewers I know, I've mentioned this about, uh, already are aware of the podcast and they listen to it. Um, Because it's fortnightly and they focus on a particular book or an author or a relationship. That was one interesting one I read, I listened to recently. It was Agatha Christie, the relationship between Agatha Christie and P.G. Woodhouse, which is very interesting. Um, Now, I'm actually on that podcast um, as a guest speaking about early penguin crime. And that one should be out. Depends when you watch this, of course. But um, the first sort of week of February, I believe, 2024. So if you're watching this uh, later than the first week of February 2024, then chances are if you search it out, you'll be able to find that one online. And uh, it's worth a listen. But it was... um, having that discussion with the host Caroline who herself is a big crime fan as you can imagine running that podcast it sort of got me into uh, I thought I must get around to uh, bagging up my Collins crime and uh, that's one of the reasons why we're doing it today is because I wanted to uh, get those crime titles out yeah, there's no dust coming off these. Um, as I said, I was pretty sure I'd quite comprehensively done them um, a couple of years back. It may just be some of the ones later on which have been stood up. Maybe have picked up a little bit of dust in the last couple of years. So I'll give them just the once, the brush over once. That's lovely, isn't it? That is gorge. Not in a dust wrapper, but still very, very nice. Absolutely fine for me. Yeah, gorgeous. Detective Ben. it dead flat I don't want it to be rippled at all and that one just on the borderline but it just just fits in okay now this one here it's like a bit of a changeover. Now, are they all? Yeah. So this one and the next one, I suspect, are reprints. They're not the originals. So if you have a look, this is number... What number was this? This was number... Detective Ben was number 49. This is number 55, and it's got an advert on the back. And 56 has an advert on the back. But 57, you've got the list again. And they went to adverts a little bit later on. So these, those two there are ever so slightly later printings. Now, I'm not disappointed by that because I'm just happy to have a nice early copy of the book. In fact, on the front there, look, it's added the, the moniker, a crime club sixpenny. So as I said, when you're going through a run, you start to pick up the little clues about if a book is a first or not. So I will now know, if I haven't noted it already, when I edit this video, I'll make a note that I know that number 55 and 56 are both reprints uh, for my own records. But for Collins Crime Club, I have every book that I've got, I've got it listed out by author, title and printing. So I'm sure I've already got that noted, that it is a, a reprint, you know, but still really, really nice. So I'm not worried at all about that. And the same with the uh, same with this one here. Murder on the bridge. So, most of the publishers, Penguin included, Hutchinson included, of this era started taking adverts 
and it was just a way to offset the cost of the books to begin with and um it was something that went on for quite a while in books right through the war in fact um but it did tend to die out it was uh sort of something that in a way got frowned on um i don't know why but it, it sort of did right that one was my test one from last time so that is my first bag of paperback bags actually used up so i've got another hundred here you'll be pleased to hear and let's, let's uh, dig into these so it has been predominantly paperback bag size hasn't it rather than digest size just a couple of digests needed Oh, I have digest still. Last thing I want to do is get my bags mixed up. <laughs> so yeah, so um, if you can make it to the end, I have got some slightly more uh, unusual Collins crime titles to look at. A uh, Collins White Circle, I should say, which is the their paperback imprint. The Collins Crime was uh, obviously just for the crime ones here. Policeman's Holiday. This is quite a bit, quite a bit rough, so we might struggle a little bit with this. Yeah, it's a tight fit, but it's in. That's the main thing. And I suppose eventually I'm going to have to do all my paperbacks now that I've started. I will certainly try roughly to do them in chronological order. So the really, really old ones I'll do first. Now this one's got a bit of a tatty old dust wrapper on, which I'm going to take off simply because it's so fragile. As I said, I've got my box of dust wrappers quite handy so I can lay these flat. So when and if I ever sell this book on or move the collection on, I'll be able to marry it up with the uh, with the original wrapper. So that it stays complete. murders slides it okay and I think in a little while as the books get a bit thinner we'll be able to fly through these because they're not going to be so fragile great isn't it that is it is almost iconic you have to say it's just incredible i love them i absolutely love them now i mentioned that the start of my collection of collins white circle came from from one another collector and it was a collector who'd sadly passed away and um his main penguin collection had been donated he was a big penguin collector he donated to a local university library um but all the rest of it his pan books and his, all his other vintage paperbacks um i and his uh yeah, yeah and that was it basically no, i didn't touch the penguins um that he had spare um i bought all of that and it was a carload of stuff it's a few years ago now maybe four and a half five years ago and um I am very, very grateful and that I was allowed to buy them. And as you can see, it was certainly gone to a good home. Someone who's uh, going to appreciate them. It's a bit of a tight one again. Yeah. I'm going to put this in a digest bag because it's uh, a little bit tight. 
but I don't want to take the dust wrapper off because on the whole it's not too bad. Dead man's watch. There we are. A white circle at sixpence. So these, the price point, sixpence, was settled on because apparently that was how much a pack of cigarettes cost at the time. It was sixpence. One thing you do notice with these is they don't seem as susceptible to cigarette damage as the penguins do. Weirdly. I don't know why that is, but they just don't seem to be here. Uh... Mountain mystery. That's sliding on. Oh, yes, the one in okay. A bit of a tattier dust wrapper, but at least it's got its dust wrapper. Owl Taxi. This is still only number 72. I've not got not got a bad run really, all things considered. Um, as I said, I've not tried to track down the numbers that I'm missing. And I would imagine some of the very earliest ones are probably in the first hundred are probably going to be fairly expensive in first printings, but I'm not sure how quite how easy they would be to pick up on places like eBay. As I said, I've picked up a few from Zardos when I visited. All you need is books when I've actually gone to his warehouse. But I think it was more luck that he'd had a little run in just before I got there, you know. And um, he did buy a massive Agatha Christie collection. I think he said it was about 4,000 books. And I was there about a week after he bought them in. And I was able to fill in um, a few gaps in my collection. And I did buy some Coins Crime off him then. Plus some lovely American editions. Okay. Keep forgetting to give these tops a little dust, but I don't think there's anything to worry about with these. We'll do it all the same. The Venner Crime. It's got an advert for H. Samuel watches on the back. Only an H. Samuel watch has passed this test. <laughs> Lord Edgeware dies. Number 88. And these ones, maybe they've slimmed them down because they do seem to be sliding in even easier now which is what I suspected, that the tail end ones are going to be much easier to bag than those early ones were, which were a little bit of a battle. Question of proof. Murder in Mesopotamia. Lovely one, isn't it? 
got a big thick one, so I'm hoping it fits in okay. Last will and testament. Now the books do decidedly get start to get much much thinner, and you can tell that wartime restrictions are starting to kick in. And it's a fascinating period in paperback history, but also a very frustrating period because the books just don't seem to be around in great condition because of the conditions that they were produced, and that's. Uh, just a sign of when they were published, you know, it's, uh... but you see it in all the publishers. So some series like the Muth and Sixpennies, which had only really just got started, they just knocked it on the head. They thought, oh, we just can't, we haven't got enough paper allowance to do it. But Collins managed to weather the entire war and obviously Penguin did. And Hutchinson, they were sort of the only ones that were able to keep publishing. Guild Books was the other one, I suppose. Although they're not quite as nice books. But they're all sort of wartime ones that will have to be uh, covered in due course. Right, cracking on then. So I've rearranged the desk slightly, ready for the next bit. We're not quite under halfway, but we have done the bulk of the, uh, what I would say, the tricky ones. So I don't foresee this video being hours and hours long. And we might have some slight, well, we definitely will have some slightly more complicated ones at the end because they're different sizes um, to what we're used to here. So uh, that will be to come. But this is a sign now they're starting to the books for starters are lighter so they're not using such great paper um for starters and um yeah they're just thinner the, the books are just turning into thinner volumes now and this is wartime wartime restrictions kicking in but that's exactly what we would have expected He's at half mast. Now I did have a little think with these thinner books. Do I turn over, you know, and seal down the spine flap? So I could either do it, pull it tight like that and, and fold that bit over or just leave it and I've decided just to leave it because uh, quite often I have read these exact editions I just love reading them um, and um, you know I don't want to have to go through a whole palaver just to get a book out so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna tighten them up too tight I'm just gonna leave them as is here they still look absolutely fine you can read it you know even with the seam which was a concern to be honest, you know, how they look on the shelf. They need to have some eye appeal as well, you know, even spine out. But these do all look really, really impressive. And although they're not in ideal, an ideal spot at the moment, this is a rough one, isn't it? Um, no, they're not in an ideal spot where they're all in a, a beautiful line and they are sort of basically packed away onto a bookcase just to get them all in. That won't always be the case. And, uh, if I'm able to move house this year or possibly next year um, and then I get my purpose-built library which is very much on the agenda then I won't have any books behind books they're all going to be face out the only books behind books I might possibly end up doing will be something like the pelican books you know which uh, I don't really need to refer to all that much 
All right. So some of these would have been stood up for a couple of years. That's why I'm giving them that extra, extra little brush. But you can see how they've changed. They're so much thinner now. It's just a sign of the times. Mystery at the Rectory. Great tiles, aren't they? They really, really are. And I knew these would look so good when they were bagged up and also benefit so much from being bagged up. They're just in such a state some of these and they're just so fragile they definitely deserve the treatment should we say So many Christy classics in this run, isn't there? Murder in Suffolk. So they retain the card covers, but they are getting quite, quite the worst for wear now. In the way that they've been produced. I don't know much about where the Collins were actually printed. I know Penguin, for example, and I no real reason to think Collins were any different. Um, Penguin print, got their books printed in many places across the UK um, because, you know, the printers were susceptible to getting bombed during the wars anywhere else. So they had to have backup places to get books printed. And uh, you do sometimes see some, like, penguins in... The dimensions is just not quite right. It's because they've just been knocked up last minute or the initial run just got burnt and none survived. I mean, there's so many reasons why. Um, it's just crazy. It's hard to envisage today just how much uh, publishing meant to the, the British audience. You know, having regular stuff to read was a big deal. But what some of the publishers actually went through to get their books <laughs> books physically printed, it was quite an ordeal. You know, securing the paper, finding a printer who was in a position to actually print a book. Quite often, the covers might be printed somewhere else. So then they had to go to a binder. And then get back to the Penguin Depot to then eventually get distributed. Um, it was quite quite a production back then. But this is more standard what we're going to see now, much, much thinner books. The old magic tape's lasting all right, isn't it? Which is good. I've got a few rolls in reserve. When I bought that dispenser, it came with three rolls, so I was able to... Uh, got a few on standby, as it were. 
And I noticed when I went on to Amazon to buy the bags, and I do put a link to these in the description below if you want a link to the actual bags I'm using. Um, I found that if you buy 200, they work out a lot cheaper. It works out about still about 11 pence a bag, um, which is a lot. But at the same time, if you think any one of these books could be worth you know, 10 pound, sometimes a bit more, then it's nothing really, is it? You know, nothing to pay to protect your uh, your books, and it is going to give them great protection, and that's the main thing. Right, I need to make a little bit more room again. Okay. Going, going, gone. And that po podcast, the She Done It podcast, somebody like this, Phoebe Atwood Taylor, that's just the sort of person they would do a deep dive on and they. You know, you could listen to an episode specifically on that author. And that's where I'm finding, I'm learning so much from listening to that podcast. So if you are interested in this sort of thing, definitely go and check it out. Because uh, it's proved to be a real mine of information for myself. Learning more about, you know, classic crime authors from this period, really. Of which I didn't know a lot. Apart from, you know, the more popular ones, like, or the more well-known ones, I should say, than Agatha Christie. Nice copy of that, actually, towards zero. I wonder if it's dated. Yeah, see, they just, in a lot of cases, they didn't date the books. There's no printing history whatsoever on that. And it does make trying to collect them in an, an early edition very, very tough, you know. You have to have had loads through your hands. And as far as I know, there isn't a guide listing the clues to identify a first edition. So it is sort of just done by your own experience. You know, with the adverts on the back and the different numbers that are listed. That seems to be the only way to do it. Even though these are the ones that have been stood up, they're not too bad at all. Um, yeah. yeah, they're okay. Moving my finger.
one's got a bit of spine roll on it, but it's okay. It's the only one I've got, so happy with that. Ringed with fire. I'll always take a lower grade copy rather than not have a copy at all. Same with this one actually. The sixteenth stair. And basically the Collins White Circle morphed into Fontana books in the early nineteen fifties was also a Collins one so the the Christie's moved over to Fontana at that point um, some authors got added some got lost completely I guess as they maybe went out of style possibly all the authors weren't producing new books this is a nice one isn't it J.M. Marsh but that's sort of the evolution so you start with the Collins White Circle then you go into Fontana And then eventually Collins comes back, doesn't it, as, a, as an imprint. Um, and becomes, well, HarperCollins. That we know today. Plus a lot of their other imprints at that point. This is quite a bit. The case of the tea cozies and quite a bit of spine roll on this one. Being read a few times. So I have to remember the period that these were being published, you know. easy to forget. Oh, I'd say we're well, o oh, well over halfway. I'd say almost at two thirds of the way. Because as expected, <sighs> these are much easier to bag. It's still going to be a fairly long video, but I'm sure you don't mind. I wanted to do these all in one hit rather than split it into two. Um, I know these bagging videos aren't going to be everyone's cup of tea, but at the same time, it does give us another chance to see these great books and also get a little sort of collection update on what I've picked up since maybe I last shown them on the channel, you know. Rope's End and Rogue's End. I remember I used to come across the Crime Club books quite a bit. And I just didn't really know where to start on them. I don't think I ever came across the really early ones like I've got now. But I would come across these more common ones. These I think they're more common. And... Uh, it wasn't in a lot of cases it wasn't authors that I recognized and I had no real sort of desire to pick them up but I'm so glad I've got what I've got now because it's not the sort of thing you're just going to come across in the wild anymore they're just you know they're just not I think they're all in a lot of ways ferreted in collections which rarely turn up for sale Right, need to make it a little bit more room again. Okay then, last couple of stacks to do now. There were six stacks, and this is uh, stack five. So uh, we are flying through it. Sorry, stack, yeah, this is stack five now, yeah. As you can see, the books have got super thin. 
And I said, I think on the whole, looking through these now, at this point, the penguins have got far, far thinner than the, uh, the Collins ones had. And I think what's holding these together a bit better is the fact that the, the covers are very thick card or thicker card rather than the penguin ones, which are so, so delicate and they've not lasted the test of time. The, uh, the penguin covers are virtually paper in effect. A four ply yarn. And I think Collins is one of those labels, these coin crime ones, is one of those publishers that you can go to the shelf, shut your eyes and pick a book at random, and you can pretty much know the sort of thing you're going to be reading. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. This is number 185. I think the crime ones go up to about... 300 and something I think maybe a little bit further than that this one's being a little stubborn for whatever reason is it slightly wider no it's just not having it there we are it's got a bit of a, a spine roll on it Now, the only thing I'm worried about with these bags, and maybe once again, someone could leave a little comment. Traditional comic bags over a course of say five years or so would inevitably start going bad. The PVC would start melting or breaking down rather. And the, you'd be left with a sticky mess trying to take them off. What are people's experiences with these BCW bags long term? Are these going to be archivally in art for at least 10 years or more? Are we going to be good for that? I'd like to know. Of dawn. That was me, I tend to get up at the crack of dawn. taking hardly any dust off these so that's good news they're kept these are actually kept in the office um, they're not up with my main sort of paperback collection in the office I've got a bookcase with some of the uh, the sort of series that I'm not mega actively collecting and these are stored there um, it is unfortunate but when I uh, when we're ready to move um, I'm gonna have to move the paperback collection into short-term storage just whilst the house is on the market and what have you so it needs to be well organized so I can go back and uh, gain access to some of the books if I need to you know so these Collins crime books the whole collection fits in two comic boxes just about which is perfect you know and so i can clearly box them up now that they're backed as well i've got that extra level of protection on them and i can mark the comic boxes and i know exactly what's what should i need to get into them you know now you notice we've already done a body in the library the body in the library has a uh, 163 but this is 198 it's just a later reprint but the first time that that number has been used and that would be something that Fontana would do. Rather than reuse the same number, um, they would just go back 
and give a reprint, a brand new number at this point. And Fontana did exactly the same. But usually with a Fontana, it was because the book had like a new cover. Um, Pan were similar to that as well. Also for a while, the books got more robust. They put this like reinforced spine on them. It, I've only got three books that are like this, but it is something that happened for a short period of time during Collins's history. Very, very weird. Don't know what the reason is behind it. Obviously it ended up covering up some of the advert there as well. So I can't imagine the advertisers were very happy about it. Hair murders, a bit of writing on the front there. But we won't hold it against them this time. Okay. Another Christy taken at the flood. As I said, it might seem a bit Christie heavy, but if I picked up any that I were missing, it was Christie titles that I didn't already have. So when I have come across them, I do check my list. And if it's one I haven't got, I do tend to pick them up. Because I do collect Christie in all pre-1970 paperback form anyway. space required here. Here we are then, N or M. Great title. Silent speaker. Evil under the sun. of ABC but it's a different number again Lovely. the 
third victim. Okay, now the last batch of crime, white circle crimes are these, up to number 294. So I guess that gives us a bit of an idea about age of these. But this is only a guess. I don't, I don't think I have a definitive list of titles and numbers, I'm afraid to say. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't for Collins. I said that website I mentioned, the vintage paperbacks one, um, is probably the best bet. Certainly they list all the services editions because that's one of his real things. And um, I think there's about 200 service editions, if you can believe it. So that's more than, I haven't got 200 books in my entire collection. I've got about, I think about 150, so that gives you an idea. So very, very scarce indeed, you know. But these are much different, they're, you know, they're post-war now, and uh, they don't have the same attraction, evidently. Let's look at the last one here, 294. Just see if there's any sort of um, date on them. Well, there's no date at all, you know. A little insert inside, it's quite nice, isn't it? The Mystery Book Guild for Crime Connoisseurs. Yeah, that's cool. What were the titles? Hmm. Cool. Nice little insert, but that to me I think is post-war, um, but not by much. Might be like 1945, 1946, I think. Maybe a little bit later, but as I said, they just, <laughs> it's the only publisher I know that just didn't date their books. It's like very, very difficult. You've got to be some sort of sleuth to uh, to do it. Now we've got my three mysteries. So these weren't crime. These were a mystery story. And these have got these Cerise colored covers. The Dorothy Sayers there, which you could say slightly crosses over into crime, couldn't you? Um, and, you know, I've steered clear of these other ones. These are just ones that have ended up in my collection, you know, through other means, really. I've not gone out to deliberately buy them. They were part of a collection of books. And, you know, if it was something vintage like this that I haven't got, well, I've obviously I've picked it up. But I don't particularly go out to buy them. Once again, I've got no idea how many are actually produced of these. In actual fact, Collins did muck up their numbering and um, they had to start putting little C's after the crime books, for example, because the numbers had already been used. Um, but there you go. Okay. Now this is an interesting one on the back because this is a services edition. So it's a pink one, but it says services edition, published by Collins. Then on the back, this edition produced for the Central Services Book Depot at Artillery House and looked for circulation to the fighting forces of the Allied Nations, not to be resold. So this was a specific wartime edition produced for the forces, as opposed to the general public, basically. But as we'll see in a while, some of those editions did get um, did get resold officially through W. H. Smith. So, as I said, they start to get a bit slightly more interesting now, and you get to see another part of the uh, Collins story. So, this is the one and only Western I've got. <laughs> um, a white circle pocket again, but it's uh, yellow, which some of the other publishers use themselves for westerns. And I've got no idea how good it is. I don't think they did many, maybe two series of six. And that was it. That was their their Western 
output Collins, so not a lot. But I'm glad that I've got an example, even if it's just the one. That's absolutely fine, that one. Forget where I got that one. Now, these next two, this was a, uh, this is a huge one. This is a white circle edition of novels by famous authors. And I got this one and one more. Now, I suspect that that might be too big to get into a paperback bag. We might need to use a digest, but let's just give it a try. Yeah. Straight into a digest for this one. That's still got its dust wrapper. And here we had some slightly other shaped ones to come. Not that this is an odd shape, it's just thick, isn't it? That is all. book that one but well well protected this is another one in the same series but without a dust wrapper so it may fit into a normal paperback bag it's got a bit of a spine roll but it fits in Sally Lunn yeah okay it fits in alright just it fills the bag well we could say Like so. Then we got this, which is a, a white circle news book. I've got two of these. The Riddle of the Kremlin and um, The Pilot Walked Home. So that's N1 and that's N6. So these are part of the same series by the look of it. Sort of a bit more unusual. Again, can't really remember how these came my way, but they probably turned up in a little vintage paperback collection, and I thought, oh, they're unusual, I have those. That said, I don't, it's not like I desire to get all of them, it's just nice to have a representation sometimes of a series. So, that's those two. Now we've got one last little pile of unusual books to do, service editions and what have you. But I need to make just a tiny bit more room once more. Okay, so these next ones then are Collins White Circle Pockets again, but these are Canadian ones, I do believe. And uh, this is an early Canadian one. Yeah, it's, this is Toronto. Um, yeah, printed in Canada, 1942. Now I've got a little handful of these. Um, I remember watching Gary Levisi's channel, um, who's another YouTuber, and as far as he knows, nobody has got a full set of them. It's a couple of hundred again, and uh, they're very, very scarce indeed. There's five out of the Christie's, of which I've got one, which unfortunately is the most common one. Are they slipping on, right? I've got the most common one, should we say, but I don't mind. <laughs> I was really lucky to find it, so... Uh, I'm not complaining. But yeah, these Canadian white circles, as you can imagine, they never turn up in the UK. And they're just so obscure. Wartime books that were print made and printed in Canada. Obviously, they're not going to really turn up over here very often. So to see any at all is quite a surprise. Um, the early ones are typographical, and then they, get, um, uh, they have uh, illustrated covers, which are quite nice. It's number 207. They've got a particular charm about them. They remind me a little bit of the Boardman paperbacks, of which I don't collect those. I've had a few through my hands, but I don't uh, sort of collect them. There we are, but they are quite nice, aren't they? 
was the first one I uh, I got. Weird doings in a haunted castle. <laughs> this just shows you, these look so grey. Just shows you how nice the uh, some of the more illustrated series, when I get round to doing those, how good they're going to look when they're bagged up. You know, I'm thinking some of my like 60s science fiction runs, for example, they're just going to look amazing. My Ballantine books, they're just going to be great, absolutely great. Now this is the, uh, I've got four Canadian, this is my one and only Agatha Christie one. This is the most common one, the hollow in Canadian form, but I said there are five and I think three of the five are the first time the books were ever in paperback. So they're actually the paperback first printings, I think. So uh, definitely wanted by Christie collectors, any of these. But yeah, a bit of a beaten up old copy, but I'm very, very pleased to have that indeed. Um, now we've got some Colin Services Editions. This is uh, the Services Editions of Five Little Pigs. Same as what we saw beforehand. Not to be resold. And this one isn't one that's gone through the WH Smith's bookstore network after the war. This is one this was an actual wartime one. And they are more collectible than the ones which went through Smith's, which um, I may or may not have, have an example of to show you. Um, yeah, so this is one that's gone through Smith's. So it's got the sticker on the front. It says, this surplus stock, the surplus stock of this edition has been produced by WH Smith, has been purchased by WH Smith and Son um, from William Collins. So even though it was a services edition produced for the services, it was never sent to the forces. And uh, consequently, Smith brought out the stock rather than waste it. And because they had a ready market for books, of course, and uh, it was just sold through the Smith's bookstore and newsstand network. So you get to see both sorts. But the ones which didn't go through the Smith's network are the genuine service editions and more collectible, I would say. So here's John Brophy. This is a service edition here again. Just a regular one. But for Christie alone, I think there's about 20 services editions of her books which is incredible when you think about it. And they're all very, very collectible, as you can imagine. Um, generally sell for about 20 to 25 pound a book for a Christie in a service edition. Slightly thinner one again. As I said, the best, the most definitive list is on that website. But beyond that, Really, there is no other reference online showing what was even published. And I think the chap behind that website probably had the best services editions collection in existence. A lot of these, there's no copies in the British Library. Um, the publishers themselves don't have very good records of what was printed, so they're very, very scarce. And here's another one, uh, just a regular crime one here. A bit more, you can see the label quite clearly there as well. This one's slightly out of position, so I'll put that in with the other one. But actually, not a bad copy of that one. Very nice. Pull those. They are looking great. They really, really are. Pop those over there. Now, the next ones I've got are quite a revelation. So these, I believe, these two here, um, I think are Indian. Yeah, they got the RS on. Reprinted in India, 1946. So these are Indian editions. Same with, that's a fiction, this is a crime. Got Crime Club on it. This is a very rare entry indeed as a crime club title 
yeah, printed in India again, 1946. So these two Indian ones are very, very scarce. They're also very wide, as you can see. So I don't even think a digest is going to do it. Oh, yes, it might, actually. It'd be perfect if it does. Else I've got the comic bags, just in case. Yeah, in actual fact, that digest bag does it perfectly. Now, I've only ever come across these two, so they're obviously scarce, particularly in the UK, they're probably scarce in India. But look at the list of titles on the back that came out, there's loads of them in there. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to seal it over the side, but yeah, so that's that one. And then same dimensions, and it should be for this one. This is slightly more fragile, but it is a crime one. And this one I probably will fold the edge over. Yeah, so both these I think are quite scarce. But, you know, monetary value, that's always hard to judge, isn't it, on something like this? But, you know, probably 10 to 15 pounds each, I would think, you know, maybe more, maybe more. So that's those two. I think they're very, very nice indeed. Then we've got this one here. Now this is another Indian one. Um, yeah, price and sale on one rupee. And that's pretty much the only way to tell that it's the, the Indian printing, as far as I know. That's it, but it's very, very fragile, as you can see. And the Indian ones, like those, like this one we've got in our hands, apparently these are the hardest of them all to get. There's these ones here, so uh, there you go. It's a shame it's not an Agatha Christie. But yeah, very pleased to have that, one odd one, odd one there. Now, the, right, the last thing we got are the, uh, the goals for these, and I've got one other book which I want to get. Um, bagged up today now i don't know like these goals were these i think i've got six i'm not sure how quite how many actually got produced but they are very very big so i'm not going to risk it i'm just going to go straight for the digest size for these because they're huge but well, at least this first one is quite a huge tome so i think it's better in a digest bag damage and is already on it because they're quite fragile um, apart from this little batch that I've got which I got all at the same time I have never ever come across these for sale so whether they just didn't sell very well I, I'm not sure really but um, they're definitely a curiosity and Goldsworthy was massive in his day um, had that revival in the 60s tying into the TV show which was a, like an early form of Downton Abbey in a, in a funny sort of way um, so this is a lot thinner, so I think that might actually fit in a normal paperback bag. Let's have a try. Yeah, no problem at all. Horses for courses, I think they say. But yeah, so I've never read the uh, Goals were these. I have to say, these have never really appealed to me. But in their day, they were really were, they were popular. squeezed in that one these books are just flaking off little bits of chips and stuff it's very very difficult to keep them intact which thankfully once again the bagging is going to offset that now this one's got a really tatty dust wrapper so I might as well just take this off and stick it with my other it's actually detached my other dust wrapper bits to be honest rather than force that in it looks much tidier doesn't it white monkey 
lucky. I recognise the titles quite well because they were such big sellers. This is another one I'm going to take the wrapper off. I said it's not something that I would try and track down them all but I'm glad I've got the ones that I've uh, I've got and maybe that the six that I've got was all that ever got published I don't know you know but for that pre-war I think these are pre-war publishing era I definitely do want them since they're cool paperbacks there we are and then the last one I recognize as well Swan Song So that's all the paperbacks. They do look really, uh, they do look really nice now. Much more together. Um, I've got just one. I have one bag left. Can you believe it? Um, I have got one other thing I want to bag up though. So let's slide that one in there a moment. In actual fact, I'll stick it in with the uh, the digest bags in a sec. Anyway, it's, it's that. So this is the West West of England Almanac, which is very much where I live in the UK. And this is from 1898, so it's quite ancient. And um, unfortunately, I've had this f literally for decades, and the cover is almost off. In fact, it, it may even be off, I don't know. But basically, what I want to do is put it in a bag to, to protect it. So I'm going to have to use a comic bag, and I thought, well, I have these out, so that's going to be perfect for it. I once ran down someone's house. They were a local historian, and they had a big run of these. They had a, you know, they must have had 10 years worth. I was really, like, jealous, because inside this is fascinating, particularly because you, if you're from the area, you recognise the names. But it definitely, it definitely needed a good... Bit of protection stop it getting worse i remember buying this as a kid in a second-hand bookshop and being absolutely fascinated by it it wasn't expensive i was only like three quid or something like that but for oh wow and i've managed to keep it all these years and i just thought every time i pick it up it gets a little bit more damaged <laughs> Putting it, putting it in this just wrapper, um, this comet bag rather, it's gonna just protect it going forward. And as I said, this is actually stored very close to where the, my Collins crime books are, so that's why I thought I would do this at the same time. Great. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that bagging experience. My entire Collins White Circle collection, all the crime titles, my Fire and One Services editions, and a few interesting books at the end, uh, all done in, well, just over an hour. I think that's pretty good going in actual fact. So I do intend to try and bag up one sort of part of my collection at least once a month on this channel and at least once a month on my other channel so uh, if you're not already subscribed over there do go and check it out for further cleaning and bagging action if you've enjoyed today's video do please give it the thumbs up if you've not already do please hit the subscribe button for regular vintage paperback content and i'll look forward to seeing you again very soon bye <laughs>